All right, welcome everybody to the uh, Board of Education for Queen Anne's County, our meeting May 3rd, 2023. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we met in closed session. So pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County met in closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction. Any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals and to consult with counsel to obtain legal device and to consult with staff consultants or other individuals about pending or potential litigation all right thank you mm -hmm. can i have a motion to approve the agenda so moved. second all those in favor say aye aye, aye. Uh, approval of the minutes for april 12 2023 closed session president move to address, um, approve the minutes as presented for a closed session of april 12th got a motion second all those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for April 12, 2023, open session. President, I move to approve the minutes as presented for our April 12th open session. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for April 19th, 2023, closed session. Mr. President, I move that we approve the minutes as presented for April 19th, closed session. Aye. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Approval of the minutes for April 19th, 2023, open session. Mr. President, I move that we approve the minutes as presented for April 19th, open session. Second. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's done. Energizer Bunny Award. Yes. Good evening. So we're going to start off with our first award. This award. This award is given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored by Bayview Financials, Mr. Chip Brittingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys. If they'll please come forward with their Energizer Bunny. We always appreciate their partnership. And if I could please have Ms. Tubbin and the administrative staff please come forward. So nominated by our principal at Graysonville Elementary School, we'd like to present the May Energizer Bunny Award to Krista Dumont. Congratulations. Krista is a special education assistant at Graysonville Elementary School and comes to work every single day with a positive attitude and is a bundle of energy. She invests 110% of her time and energy into the students at Graysonville Elementary School. And as a new staff member to the school this year, she has quickly built relationships and great respect amongst students and staff. Way to go, Krista. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, if there, our principal could come back up, administrative staff, because we have one more award. <laughs> so our next award is our Spirit Award, and this award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And our May Spirit Award winner is Tanaya, Tana, Tanaya Anthony, if she could please come forward. <laughs> Tanaya. 
Congratulations, Tanea. Tanea Anthony is a special education assistant, truly understands students and provides natural and positive supports for all of her students. Students trust her and she helps them to believe in themselves. She is always willing to lend a helping hand. Her positive spirit truly makes a positive difference at Grayson Bill Elementary School. Thank you. So I'd like to invite up our supervisor for fine arts and media and by literacy and no, so Mr. Michael Bell, no stranger to us. So the Shining Star Award, this award recognizes someone or a group of people in our school system who shine. Our May Shining Stars are all of our Queen Anne's County Public School Library Media Specialists and Associates in K through 12. So our media specialists have been working hard the past few years, transforming their media centers into 21st century learning hubs for their schools, complete with makerspace stations, creativity corners, learning lab centers, and arts integrated activities, making our media centers exploding with learning and lots of fun. Our media specialists have also been championing students and they are winning so many different awards. For the past four years, Queen Anne's County has swept statewide awards across multiple schools at the Maryland Conflict Resolution Day Bookmark Art Contest, including two first place winners from Sharon Murdoch at Bayside Elementary School and Christy Clow at Mattapique Elementary School. We also had statewide pre uh, presenters in school library media, media this year. This trend began back in 2018 with Amy Taylor at Queen Anne's County High School, nominated by Mr. Bell for a National Librarian Award. Mrs. Taylor, was selected from a pool of over 280 applicants across the nation and participate in the Library of Congress Summer Teaching Institution in Washington, D.C. This year, Heather Gray and Danielle Lowe were selected to deliver their first statewide presentation at the Sailor E-Resources Symposium. We also had multiple media specialists attend the Maryland Association for School Librarians State Conference, and our very own Sharon Murdoch was selected as a finalist for the Maryland School Librarian of the Year Award. Also, yeah, I feel like that deserves applause. Also in April at the um, Futures Conference, out of 150 participants, only six groups were chosen to be highlighted from the conference, and one of those six was obviously Queen Anne's County Public School Media Specialist. So whether it's creating innovative maker spaces or simply inspiring a love of reading, these May Shining Stars are a shining example of what learning needs to look like in our libraries across our county of 21st century learning. So congratulations to all of our Queen Anne's County Public School Media Specialists. We're going to do them one at a time and then we're going to have them stand up here so we can take a group picture. Now, I will mention that we have four that aren't with us, but um, who we do have here, we're happy to have here, is Heather Gray from Kennard Elementary School. And we also have Danielle Lowe from Ken Island Elementary School. Yeah. <laughs> and she's representing with her shirt. We got it. Yeah. And Jennifer Henry from Sudlersville Elementary School. And Kristen Clow from Mattapique Elementary School. And Sharon Murdoch from Bayside Elementary School. And Emily Wade from Centerville Elementary School. And Carol Sanger from Centerville Middle School. And Sean Salisbury from Sudlersville Middle School. <laughs> and Kelly Nash from Ken Island High School. And Amy Taylor from Queen Anne's County High School. And thank you every day for everything you do for our students and your 
um, going into your media special or is, media centers is just phenomenal. I mean, everywhere you go, the time and energy, and make it inviting for our kids to go in and enjoying that opportunity to grab a good book and and just enjoy um, reading. So thank you for everything you do. All right, we come now to board involvement. Would any of the uh, board members like to be recognized? I would just like to give a shout out to Sellersville Elementary and their PTA for putting on the candy bingo and the family night with the book fair. Um, everything was great as usual and all the kids and parents had a fun time. <laughs> Didn't win any candy, but. <laughs> Uh, last week, I attended the art show for our students at Queen Anne's County High School. We had some very talented, very talented students from elementary school on up. It was very, very interesting and very well attended. Also, last night, uh, we had our safety meeting. Uh, I thought there was a lot of good information coming out of that. When I got home, I was thinking that this is an evolving thing that we do all the time. And what wasn't even mentioned, all our buses have cameras on the outside for running red lights. There's always something we're doing to keep up to date to make sure our kids are safe and our schools are safe. It will never stop. There'll always be new innovation coming up, but I think it was in innovative. I think people learned a lot and uh, this board and I know the staff up here is dedicated to making sure everybody is safe. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, um, I also attended the safety meeting last night and you know, we get briefed quite a bit and there are still a few things I was able to learn last night. Uh, I think that uh, Joe Savori does a fantastic job of just continually moving us forward. I know that um, I was um, I was able to attend a presentation. He does trainings all the time and uh, sat in on one. And, and I know one thing, he drills at home, remain calm. And that, you know, everyone has res you know, responds in different ways. But it was just a great presentation. It was well attended and appreciated the panel being there and, and um if you get a chance to watch it, I would encourage you. Also, I attended the bookmark celebration today um, with our two first place winners. I don't know if they're upside down, but fantastic job. And again, it's Mr. Bell and his whole team, as we find mm -hmm. out, do amazing jobs. So, and thank you to Mackay and Austin for it's been a pleasure serving with you this year. Thank you. All right. And uh, speaking of that, the uh, student board members, this is their last meeting of the year. They're getting ready to graduate. And uh, I know they're into exams this week and probably next week. Looks like Mr. Tool's already studying for uh, an exam well, he's tomorrow. He's trying to beat you again at something else. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but from all of us, you know, congratulations. It's mm -hmm. um, number one on your uh, upcoming graduation, but also uh, um, for your attendance at the meetings uh, since you were elected. And uh, 
uh, it's been a pleasure, and we're going to miss you, but we wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate and, uh, it. And Mr. Tool's not here, but he can watch this later on. Just <laughs> for a minute. And good luck with exams. Um, so student board members, Mr. Johnson, there's no uh, question who's going to go first tonight. So. <laughs> So last month, um, toward the end of last month, on April 27th, we held our annual art scene in our cafeteria, which was filled with artwork from the elementary, middle school, and high school level. At art scenes, some artists receive awards and some were actually inducted into the Art Honor Society. Following that, uh, I would like to just brag a little bit about Canal High School. Uh, recently, we were honored as, the, as a nationally on, uh, distinguished school for the Project Lead the Way program for the sixth consecutive year. Yeah, and um, right. is, uh, to kick off the month of May, on Monday, May 1st, we started AP exams, which are going to lead all the way until, I think, next week, uh, May 12th. Uh, also to kick off this month, uh, two seniors, Max Barber and Allison Corbin, were awarded for their achievements as student athletes on May 1st at the Bayside Scholar Athlete Banquet. And just last night, our band and choir groups qualified for the state festival, which is uh, essentially the equivalent of a state championship game in the, uh, those <clears throat> regards. Um, Monday night, coming up Monday night, we'll be hosting the dance showcase in our auditorium. That's May 8th, starting at 7 o'clock p.m. On May 22nd, we'll be having our innovation night, which, is, which will also be held in the auditorium. I'm sorry, I don't know the time for that right now. I apologize for that. And uh, seniors are quickly nearing graduation. Um, on Wednesday, May 17th, we'll be having senior, senior awards starting at 6 p.m. On Saturday, May 20th, prom will be held for Canal High School at Prospect Bay from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Seniors will take the finals on May 24th to May 25th. And finally, seniors will be graduating from Canal High School on May 31st in our, in our stadium with gates opening at 9 a.m. and the ceremony beginning at 10 a.m. All right, thank you. Thank you. And uh, you're going to beat yeah, Pete out of here? I guess I have. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, let me give you a handshake. I just want to say thank you to everyone. Yeah. Thank, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Uh, you know what? Um, you still go around and sit down, Dr. <laughs> Killers. <laughs> Sure, I have I have a update for Mr. Tool if that's okay. He submitted oh. something for Queen. <laughs> I, I read through to that. see if there was anything about competitions with right? Ken Island, and it's clean. So I. <laughs> uh, but Queen Anne's County High School would like to wish anyone taking an AP test good luck. Uh, May fourth is the uh, the spring music department concert has been canceled. On May fifth, interim reports will be emailed home and are for continued sports eligibility. May 9th, the nursing class pinning ceremony at 6 p.m. May 10th is the 18th annual Night of Jazz at 7 p.m. May 11th is the spring dance concert. Senior Spirit Week, that's always fun, is uh, May 15th to May 19th. May 15th is a Science, Math, and French National Honor Society's inductions at 6 p.m. The 23rd will be cap and gown distribution the 24th and 25th are senior class final exams. The 26th is a 12 p.m. dismissal and senior finals makeup. The 30th is graduation practice, panoramic photo, and a senior brunch at 8 a.m. May 31st is the baccalaureate ceremony at 6 p.m. And then June 1st is graduation. All right. Thanks, Matt. Yep. Dismissed. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. All right. Take All right. care. Take care. Okay, uh, Dr. Sam. Hard act to follow. <laughs> um, so, so many activities going on, just being able to see all of our students and performances and games and um, in the, the arts scene was just amazing, like we said, the, the talents, but I, I don't think anybody mentioned Ag Day. So I wanted to bring that up because that was certainly a very positive experience for our students. Um, under the leadership of Michael Bell, I mean Michael Page. I got Michael Bell on my mind because he was just here. Michael Page, our um, science. And uh, so they'll be coming and doing a presentation. I honestly can't wait to see it because um, the kids had a fantastic time and it was a great learning experience and we have some really good partnerships there. And um, thank you to everyone who participated. And I know Dr. Sprinkle participated in that as well. So that's my highlight. Okay, any other? 
coming to Salem. Is that right? Dr. Marcia Sprankle, good okay. evening. Good evening. And now for our, well, I need to say good evening, <laughs> President Schiffinelli, excuse my manners, <laughs> Dr. Salins, mm -hmm. board members and executive team members. I am Marcia Sprinkle, the assistant superintendent. And now for our May spotlight, which we are spotlighting April events. We are going to first start with Grace, the Gracie Project at Graysonville Elementary School. Grayson, the Gracie Project raises awareness for the community interaction with the environment. Fourth and fifth grade students have been building pollinator gardens as well as recycling and composting to help our environment. Look at our students at Graysonville Elementary School, preserving our environment. Next, we have Centerville Middle School. Last month, Centerville's Distinguished Male Voices participated in the Maryland State Department of Education's Achieving Academic Equity and Excellence for Black Boys Convocation. A few days prior to the convocation, local barbers donated their services to help the boys look top notch for their visit to Baltimore. Sixth grade students, you can see them there, picture, participated in a rapping session about prevention. They had a great time dancing, laughing, and learning. Seventh grade students also enjoyed Agriculture Day at the Centerville 4-H Park. What a fun time, and it was a grand time indeed. Next up, we have Stevensville Middle School. Stevensville Middle School enjoyed Jim Connor University of Maryland's gymnastic troop for an assembly celebrating a substance-free life. You go, Settlersville Middle School, or excuse me, Stevensville Middle School. Stevensville Middle School also hosted a family bingo night and welcomed guests of all ages for a fun, free activity time to mingle with staff. The eighth graders attended a field trip to the Wicomico Civic Center sponsored by the Junior Achievement and explored a variety of careers. What a wonderful time. Students earned their spots in our PBIS basketball tournament by exhibiting the four R's, respect yourself, respect others, respect learning, and respect property. Congratulations and go Stevensville Middle School students. Next up, we have Sutlersville Middle School students. April was Performing Arts Month at Sutlersville Middle School. The theater department produced the Little Mermaid Junior. Congratulations to all of the students and staff at Sutlersville Middle School. Also at Sutlersville Middle School, they had performances by the beginning band, concert band, string orchestra, and chorus last month as well. Look at our students. They're progressing well. And now for our Judy Centers. Our Judy Centers in Queen Anne's County are up and running well. Graysonville Elementary School's Judy Center Hub sign recently was installed, and you can see a picture there on the left. Sutlersville Elementary School's Julie Center, it's whole group time and a special mom reading to her little one right there. What a precious moment. Next up, the family. Um, Center of Queen Anne's County in Sutlersville offers so many exciting learning opportunities for our students and families in Queen Anne's and we just appreciate their, their partnership for sure. From STEM to parent-child cooking experiences to building friendships and taking field trips. What a grand time. 
lots of opportunities there. And now for our facilities update at Centerville Elementary School, you can take a look at the new HVAC, HVAC at Centerville Elementary School. Thank you to our board members, Mr. Pender and, the, and his crew for ensuring that our schools are running efficiently. Thank you so much. Look at the beautiful new roofs renovations at Kent Island Elementary School and Bayside Elementary School. On the left-hand side, you can see Kent Island Elementary School and on the right there, there we go, Bayside. So they look really nice. Also at Bayside Elementary School, Bayside has now a new serving line, stove and checkout station. They are pictured on the right, you can see all of the new equipment. And then on the left, you can see the old equipment. Boy, we have moved into the 21st century, Queen Anne's County. Again, here at Bayside Elementary School, they also received a new hot and cold reach refrigerator to make it much more efficient, which are pictured here on the right. The old appliances are on the left. I think it was Christmas in April at Bayside Elementary School. And now for the art scene that took place both at Queen Anne's High School and also Kent Island High School. I think Mr. Smith spoke about this earlier in his wrap up this evening. Our students had amazing, as you can see, they had an amazing time showing off their talent. And we have some incredible students with lots of talent. Here are the winners for the Future Chefs okay, contest here, challenge. Some of the winners' dishes included pasta salad, bell pepper coleslaw, tomato avocado salad, and orange fluff. The winning chefs were from Kent Island Elementary, Centerville Elementary, Graysonville Elementary, and Churchill Elementary School. Here are a few more winners. From Bayside Elementary School, Mattapique Elementary School, Sutlersville Elementary School. The special dishes included apple tastic, pearls pesto, and summertime berry salad. Good luck at the Nationals. And there, Queen Anne's County Public Schools has been awarded the prestigious U.S. Department of Education's Green Ribbon School District Award. We are the only school district on the Eastern Shore to achieve this distinction. Thank you for Mr. Page's leadership and Dr. Salins for your unwavering support. So thank you. And that concludes All right. our spotlight. Thank you, Dr. Sprankle. Okay. Citizen uh, participation, okay. public comment. We ask that all speakers keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their phone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or the board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. And the board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but we ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. Uh, first one signed up is Bobby Weaver. Is it just going to go on? Yeah, you just okay. sit down and, uh, and state your talking. name and okay. <laughs> where you live. Um, thank you. Good evening. My name is Bobby Weaver, and I'm a resident of Centerville. Um, and I thank you for the opportunity to come speak tonight. And I just want to add my congratulations to the um, media specialists who, who you just um, gave those awards to. Um, just. I want to offer my support to them having done the same thing that they did and I just think it's a great honor that you recognize what they do uh, here so and I am here tonight um, to 
uh, speak about a proposition that, that I've heard about called um, a proposed Board of Education directive that would limit visits by middle and high school students um, to their school libraries to 15 minutes a week. I hope that this is something that, that I got the correct word on. I didn't find the wording anywhere, but I've been talking to some folks about it. Is this an accurate depiction of a proposed directive? Actually, um, we don't, when we're during public speaking, okay. you got like three minutes and we don't, okay. it's not a question and answer. Okay. It's not a format, it's just for your, okay. get your comment out. So. so that's what I'm here to speak about then. All right. Um, I believe that this proposed action is short-sighted and fundamentally contrary to the board adopted vision and core values of Queen Anne's County's public schools. As a recently retired librarian with more than 15 years experience in public school libraries in Omaha, Nebraska, suburban libraries in San Diego, uh, California, and city libraries in Washington, DC, I've witnessed countless profound moments when a curious child or an engaged student discovers that the library is a safe place where the world gets both a little bit bigger and a lot more interesting. Um, those moments happen when young children park themselves in front of library shelves full of colorful books about sloths or front loaders or dinosaurs. Those moments happen when middle schoolers discover captivating novels about Greek and Roman gods and when high schoolers find helpful explanations for complex topics like astronomy and physics, uh, history and philosophy. These moments happen because they spend significant time exploring what their libraries have to offer, have to offer them instead of running in and out uh, of a library in 15 minutes as if it's a 7-Eleven. How can a directive limiting student visits to their school libraries to 15 minutes a week achieve the stated mission of QACPC, PS, excuse me, to foster a learning environment to educate and empower students academically, socially, emotionally, to, and to prepare them for college, career, and life success? School libraries are that kind of learning environment. How does a Board of Education directive limiting student visits to their school libraries to 15 minutes a week achieve the core value of providing access to engaging and challenging curricula? School libraries both supplement and expand such curricula. Queen Anne's County Public School says the purpose of its English and We'll give you another 20 seconds, uh, okay. Matt, because we had that. Of its ELA curriculum is to develop literacy in all students. This includes the ability to read, literature and informational texts, to write, speak, and listen, and to use language effectively. Literacy is built through lifelong reading and school libraries are where mo many acquire that habit. Most successful writers say they learn to write well because they read often. Stephen King said, if you don't have the time to read, then you don't have the time or the tools to write. All right, thank you. The time's up, <laughs> actually. Thank you. thank you very much for that. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up would be Mr. McNeil. I just let her know she can leave a copy of that. Oh, yeah, for absolutely. Oh, certainly. Thank you, mm -hmm. Mr. McNeil. And just to reiterate, if, if the public does have questions, they can always email the board or uh, uh, the superintendent, and we'll direct it to the appropriate office to make sure it gets answered. Good, Good evening. evening, Richard McNeil, live in Centerville and uh, represent the uh, retired personnel. Um, tonight, my, my main thing is uh, to give a shout out to the uh, art teachers, um, both the artscapes and art shows at both high schools were phenomenal. And, um, you know, the talent of the children is brought out by the skill and talent of the teacher that's in that classroom from elementary right on up. And the exhibits that were there uh, demonstrated that, in, in my opinion. And I think if you were there, you saw the skills that, were, were, that had been brought out. And you know, to me, I want to make sure that the public understands that teachers, just to set that up, takes an awful lot of time, that's their time. They're not compensated for the hours that it takes to put those hundreds of little pieces of paper on a wall, on a, on a board, or anything else. And, and that's true of, of everything that goes on in a school uh, behind the scenes. And I know that we hire folks to do the job in the classroom 
and that's what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to instruct. But most teachers go way beyond that to get prepared to do that. And our teachers especially, um, and I had the opportunity when I was working here to be one of the art supervisors, believe it or not. And, uh, you know, you go into classrooms in an elementary school where they see a child maybe once a week, and whatever project they're working on has to be kept until the next week. So if you went in there on Tuesday of this week, your project is worked on the next Tuesday. And I don't know how they do it, but they're organized and, and arranged. And just a, a big shout out for all of them. Um, our organization is uh, going to award two scholarships. Um, they were just picked yesterday. We had a committee meeting and at the awards at both Kent Island and Queen Anne's, one student in each of those buildings will uh, be receiving a uh, $2,000 scholarship. This scholarship is going to someone who is going to pursue a uh, career uh, in education and uh, that's what that one's for. So we're looking forward to that, and we will um, celebrate those two individuals at our June luncheon. So uh, congratulations to uh, those group. And um, the, um, I know that the, the board's gonna um, uh, honor the retirees for this year on the 21st, and I'm gonna ask the uh, superintendent if she would allow me to come in and at least welcome them to the retirement group. So. I will do that as a, as a request later, so we'll, we'll check on that. Um, and <coughs> I know, <coughs> excuse me, um, as school comes to an end, it, it, it's a big sigh of relief for everybody, and I hope it goes smooth for graduation. Thank right. you. Thank you. And uh, make sure you follow up with the superintendent and who the recipients of that scholarship are i'm sure you will we don't, yeah. we're not going to mention the of names course. tonight uh, because they're they're going to get that but yeah of I'll course let you know yeah. in june who they are too sounds good yeah thank you thank you chris blanton good evening i do have a clarifying question before i get started so we're not allowed to ask questions but Real quick, a question would be when Miss Bennett, and I've been to a lot of these um, meetings in the past, is in the statement prior to us speaking, it says if we have any questions or comments that directly relate to board, a matter of board policy or something that the board controls, please speak directly to the board. And I believe the lady behind me asked a question that directly spoke about a matter of policy that the board or the superintendent would control over. And I could be wrong, but I've been to a lot of these, and that seems to be what it says when you read the rules before we come and talk. If it's addressed to board president or respond with the board to anybody or the superintendent, will assign a proper person through the school system to answer any questions that we've heard this evening. Well, now you're speaking, but you're saying he should be speaking. Okay, <laughs> hang on one second. Hold on. Okay. Now. Time out. I just want to clarify. Okay, so when, when the instructions are read, what it says, and I'm probably going to paraphrase, but she can read it again. I, I think I, if, I if like you're going to speak tonight, then mm -hmm. please speak to something that is actually in the board's control. So you, you can come in and speak about whatever, I guess, but if it's not in the board's control, then there's not much we can do about it. Um, the board's control and. Yeah, it says, I'm sorry. Uh, questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. So if it's something that we don't, that's not in our purview. We're saying it's probably something that... But we can't ask uh, questions. Questions or statements. It's, okay. Well, it's a comment session. That's why it's called public comment. It's for public comment. Yeah, it really is. And, and I see your point. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll take a look at that. But sure. uh, mm -hmm. and I just think as a policy, we're not going to answer questions okay. because then it gets into a, you know, tit for tat or or whatever and it could get extended right. and well I, I did have a brief question if you guys don't want to answer that's fine you can just sit there and just look at me i'm perfectly okay with that um so can thank you, you. Uh, chris plan right. churchill you thank you um so there was a safety meeting yesterday and i did attend and a few of you did attend i think the unfortunate thing is that we still need lots of funding for school safety and the reason i'm here is the reason i'm here every other month is that again we have a 20 million dollar building that's being built for the Board of Education for roughly 100 people, that's $200,000 a person that we're building for, yet we still have temporaries and we're buying new temporaries. We're, we're not getting rid of temporaries, we're getting a whole brand new building
for the Board of Education, but we're not getting rid of temporaries that are a security threat. These kids should not be learning in temporary modules. These educators should not be out in temporary modules. Yet we're sitting here talking about building a new Board of Education building for $20 million. Take the temporaries and again, make them your new building. You already have the temporaries, add on to these buildings. We keep talking about how we have a capital project. It's a capital project, correct? Adding on to an existing structure is a capital project. We can use that $20 million to keep our schools safe. We need to keep our kids safe. You need to keep your educators safe. We need to finally make a stance and stop putting the issues on the last board, the last superintendent. We need to make a change now. This needs to happen because the only thing that's changing is the frequency in which these massacres are happening. It's the only thing that's changing. Mr. So Sobery, I hope I'm saying, he's, he's doing a fantastic job with the resources he's been given. I sat in the meeting last night, fantastic job, but the funding needs to be brought. And when we have $20 million that we have access to, imagine how safe Queen Anne's County could be. $20 million. How safe could Queen Anne's County kids be, educators be? You could be leading, just like we're the only one on the Eastern Shore that got some type of green thing, right? We can make a move to be safe and have our kids safe. This $20 million building needs to stop. We need to get rid of the building. Put yourself in trailers. If it's safe enough for the kids and educators, it should be safe enough for you. Put these kids in the building, an actual structure. And I'm gonna keep coming. I'm gonna keep going to commission meetings. I'll, I'll go wherever I need to go to have this stop. Uh, I, I get it if we have the funding. It's like, you know, when mom and dad have funding, sure. We don't have the funding because all I ever hear is we don't have money. We don't have money. We don't have money. Oh, we need a new board of education building for 100 people. Oh, look, there's $20 million. You guys don't strike that as a problem? That's a massive issue. I got 20 seconds. So what I'll say is, and you don't have to answer if you don't want to, do you believe that a new 20 million board of education building should take precedence over our children and your staff's safety? And this is a question that's a matter of something that is in the board's control. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you, Ms. Blanton. Thank you. And I believe, is it Barbara Young? I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time reading the first. Is that correct? Yes, thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to thank um, Dr. Stalins and Dr. Sprinkle for supporting the creation of a committee um, to look at the guidelines for classroom libraries. Um, I appreciate that you listened and responded in a collaborative way. One piece of the directive that does not appear to be a focus of the new committee is the restriction on library school library class um, access for ELA students in the middle and high school to only 15 minutes a month. So I know that this was a directive that came down with the materials of instruction policy that um, ELA teachers in the middle and high school could only take their, um, their classes there 15 minutes a month. Um, I'm concerned about the implications of this directive and confused as to the rationale behind it. There's up to, up to 1,400 minutes of ELA instruction time a month at these grade levels. 15 minutes of structured library time is only 0.01% of this time. This directive is not connected to any existing written policy. I keep hearing a focus on bell to bell instruction time. Of course, the primary focus of school is curriculum instruction and academic achievement. However, I think we all agree and want schools to be expansive and enrich students in many ways. There are many things that schools offer for um, enhancement and additional enrichment that occasionally occur during instruction time. It includes DARE programming, assemblies, special speakers, positive behavioral and centered programmings. All these offerings outside of curriculum instruction teach and help students grow. So I don't understand why activities that are deemed to be acceptable uses of occasional instruction time, these are acceptable uses, but going to the library only deserves 15 minutes a month. Is a special speaker more academically relevant than kids spending time in a library? Um, I reached around. I, I reached out to media specialists at neighborhood Eastern School, Eastern Shore Schools districts to learn what was happening. I was informed, at least that in Caroline and Talbot districts, no restrictions have been placed on library access, nor any restrictions on kid read, kids reading their own books in class. In fact, some ELA teachers in Talbot County have sustained silent reading programs as part of their instruction. 
These restrictions, in my opinion, make our county stand out, but not in a positive way. There's a big billboard on 301 recruiting teachers to our county, and I fear these restrictions will deter good teachers who value children having generous access to books and reading opportunities from coming to our county. Um, okay, I just also want to share, I helped out in the book club at um, Queen um, Kennard, and I was the first time I had been to their library, and I went into their library, and I just got such a feeling of excitement and expansion. It was just like so much fun, um, and I was helping the kids with the books, and everyone was so excited, and I just ask you to think about, like, the next time you're in a library, how it feels to you, how expansive that feeling can be, where you just have all this information at your, at your fingertips, and you can explore, and the world gets bigger, and think about why we are restricting middle and high school students. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I don't have anyone else signed up. Is there anyone else who wants to speak? Can I say something? I just want to say thank you to everybody who comes here, voices all their concerns, their opinions, their beliefs, their values. We do hear you. That's the reason I'm sitting here is because I felt like nobody was ever listening to any of us, teachers, parents. So I appreciate it. Um, whether it be a policy, directive, safety. I know Mr. Blanton has spoke several times and um, in my opinion, no, I don't believe we should be building a new Board of Education building for $20 million. I think it should be getting put on to Kent Island. I mean, even Mackay was here, voiced his concern with why are we being put back in portables? So I just want you to all know that we hear you, we value your opinion, and thank you. Okay. Next we have information items. Uh, we've got a proposed 2023-2024 board meeting calendar. I think everybody's taking a look at that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, doesn't require a vote. First read policy 408. Who's going to be doing that? Uh, Dr. No. Drug-free workplace. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Salins, members of the board and executive team. For the record, Michael Knoll, Director of Human Resources, Queen Anne County Public Schools. I sit before you tonight to bring an information item about an update of format and content of our current drug-free workplace policy. This policy has been in effect since 2013 and needs to be updated. As you know, effective July 1, cannabis becomes recreational in Maryland, therefore, it is no longer an illegal drug as it is currently outlined in our current policy. So what I have before you tonight for a first read is an updated policy in which we identify illegal drugs, which cannabis used to be, and the new policy will add cannabis or marijuana similar to alcohol, which is still not permitted, not allowed, in a drug-free school zone at work, in the workplace, during the day, or at any school-related activity. So this policy will capture that. Um, it will be posted for the appropriate time for public comment. But again, this is tonight is just an information item for you as a first read. I will come back next month and then again in July for uh, any modifications to this for a final approval It'll be right after the law takes effect, but uh, will put us in compliance with what the new law will be. All right, and uh, it's up on the public yes. for public view. On, it on is the up website, for public right? view, and will be there open to comment. All right. Yes, sir. And Any questions? That was the only red line. That was the only red right. word. It's it's, the whole thing. it's, a, it's a pretty simple red line. It's yeah. but but we want to we want to ensure that it is still going to be non permissible in in a Queen Anne's County public school course. Okay, you. any questions, board members? Thanks, Dr. Noll. Okay. All right, policy 503. This is second read student attendance. Mr. Matt Evans, good evening. Good evening, Mr. President, Dr. Salins, members of the board, executive team. For the record, my name is Matt Evans, supervisor of student services. I'm here tonight for the second read of uh, the student attendance policy number 503 and as of today there have been no public comments sure any uh, comments or questions from the board 
I guess the one thing we're moving this from 20% down to 10%. Yeah, so that was, and I don't know if that initially came from the feds or if it was from the state, but ultimately the state does now look at any student who's absent 10% of the school year at any time for any reason is chronically absent. And I'm assuming that's the same policy we have with our staff too. I mean, because teachers, we want in classrooms as much as do. I mean, I, I, I always hear people come and say, you know, we have a substitute teacher and we have trouble getting substitute teachers. And there's always, always been a little quirk of mine is I'm gonna just, how we, I know teachers have it, things they have to do personally and other times, but we need people in the classroom, both student and teachers. Yes, yes, agreed. And so the, the magic number for students is 18 days in the 180-day school okay. year. So once they hit 18, they're considered chronically absent. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I also have the next policy. Policy number 510, destruction of information. <clears throat> Um, again, this was a completely rewritten uh, policy to um, make sure that we're compliant with both FERPA, COMAR, and the Maryland Student Records Manual regarding the destruction of information after students have left us. Comments, questions, board members? No, that's the second read for that. Okay, is that thank it? you. All right, Just thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. I was waiting for you to say you're the next. <laughs> You're on the next <laughs> list here. All right, policy 607, second read, comprehensive curriculum management policy. Evening again, President Schiffanelli. Dr. Sprankle. Dr. Salins, board members and executive team members. I'm here tonight to bring um, policy 607, comprehensive curriculum management. This is for the second read. At this point, we have not received any written comments. I did have two inquiries, and I did return one community um, person's phone call, had dialogue with her. She, she seemed to feel comfortable. Um, the second person that I dialogued with, I tried to reach them, but couldn't reach them. But at the, to date, I have no written comments. All right. Board members, questions? No questions or comments. Dr. Sprankle, thank you very much. Okay. Now, we'll move on to policy 638, student yes. behavior. I'm here for policy 638, um, which is also a second read as well. Um, at this point, we have not received any written comments at all, and that's where we are. Okay, board members? No nope. questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, expenditure status reports. <clears throat> Good evening, President Schiffinelli, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. My name is Jane Towers. I'm the CFO here in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Tonight we bring before you the expenditure status report in summary and in detail for your review for period ending April. Comments? Well, I say everything you've got in the below 100%, so that's that's a good number. We've moved some stuff around. Uh, I'm hoping at the end of the year we'll be able to accomplish everything we want to do and make sure our fund balance is in our realm of where we like to keep it. That's a very good point, that fund balance policy between mm -hmm. 2 and 5%. All right. Any other comments? Questions? Nope. All right. Esther 2 and Esther 3 breakdown. So ESSER 2, as we discussed before, is winding down. There is still a couple encumbrances left, but everything else is spent out. The grant period ends 930. And then with ESSER 3, we are looking into 24 and encumbering those um, additional positions out with the hopes to incorporate them in the FY25 budget. Comments, questions, concerns? All right. Thank you, Ms. Tower. Thank Concerns, you. yes, about some Sorry. funding moving forward, but no, thank you. <clears throat> okay, we're scheduled to take a break. Do we want to keep going or take a break? Um, keep running. going. All right, we're going to keep going. That Seems to be our, yeah, modus operandi. Current uh, board action items, human resources and substitute bus driver report. Everybody's had a chance to uh, ask questions about that, to review that. Yes. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mr. President, I move that we accept the um, HR report as presented. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. 
policy 415 approval and this is employment of substitute teachers dr no good evening again mr president dr salens members of the board and executive team i am still michael no director of human resources for queen anne's county public schools i come before you tonight for the third and action item for the reformatting and updating of our current substitute teacher policy. The policy has now updated our current policies, which are much more electronic than the former policy was, where it was all paper pencil. But this on onboarding policy enables our substitutes to do uh, all of the application processes online and expedites us processing them into getting into classrooms. So, Tonight, I ask for approval of this new policy to capture our current practices in the hiring of substitutes. Great. Okay. Uh, I do have one question, though, and I don't know if it just relates to this in particular. Because I know we had a question at, at some point about um, the background checks. We do the back. Do we do um, the case, Maryland case search now as a part of our? That, that is included in the background check. The, back, the background checks that we do for our substitute teachers are inclusive of both state of Maryland and federal FBI background checks. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. So uh, do we have a motion? Yes, yes, Mr. President, I move that we accept um, policy 415 as presented. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The motion is approved, and substitutes are going to be knocking down the door, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Salins, uh, Kennard Elementary School nursing room expansion. Yes. Um, so I, I'm coming to ask approval to be able to send a letter with timing wise. It's very difficult in the summer to ensure that when funding is released on July 1, that we can hit the floor running. And so I'm asking to be able to send um, approval of this so that I can send a letter of intent um, to the company so that we can ensure that we will be able to start the project. This um, utilizes the um, source well contract and um, that is a, a, a cooperative purchasing agreement. Um, again, through source well, this is not local funds. This is not part of our local operating budget and really the purpose of this is to be able to um, change the configuration to ensure that we have a secure vestibule as we enter into Kennard Elementary School as well as reconfigure the um, nurses suite there the health suite there to include um, isolation areas which right now it's just one big open room so um, that's the purpose of the reconfiguration this project probably will be done over the summer because that's why we're yes and this is a safety plus nursing issue. Yes, exactly. Okay. Any other questions? Well, yeah, I, I well, and I feel bad because I know that Dr. Salins probably can't relate to the yeah, facility stuff. Yes, because <laughs> I did have questions about the principal architect, the electrical outlay, and if just this is something that takes precedence over maybe some of our other concerns and needs for facilities. I understand the secure vestibule. Yeah. But I mean, this is where we had our newest Judy Center also. No, was it? no, Kennard, that, that's Graysonville. Elementary oh, yes. School. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is Kennard Elementary School. And, and um, yes, the first part of that project is that secure vestibule as you come in um, through uh, what now is the um, the vestibule there where it dumps right into the open school mm -hmm. that will be relocated. So as you come to the door entry will actually be kind of really into where the principal's office is right now. And um, so there'll be a reconfiguration there so it goes right into the main office. And then as I said, the, the other part is um, taking that kind of whole room, not changing necessarily the configuration of that because that's all wrapped around um, uh, walls that can't be moved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're concrete walls. So it's just really re reconfiguring that suite to meet all of the standards for um, our health suites, which is an isolation room. Right now, we don't have that. It's just a big open space. So. Where do they go if a child needs to, if the student I think in that room, they, they currently... They do have something in that area, but it's small compared to that school yeah. size. And yeah. um, this has, has been uh, set aside by the county um, as a county project for Kennard. In addition, Kennard is going to see a facelift of painting this summer that's needed as well. 
and that security vestibule. So it, it does need some work there in Kennard and they're gonna. What's the electrical work that's gonna be, is that just for, what's the electrical piece? I don't know if anybody can address that. It's well, 5,052 for. Yeah, I believe that's door. for, um, especially in the area of the health suite where you're gonna be, if you're gonna be closing off to create an isolation room, you're gonna have to put outlets in there. Um, you may lighting. have to run lighting and things like that to, to ensure that each space um, is kind of all inclusive to itself. Um, so okay. like we would put, we would put water and some, you know, if we were doing the design of, a, of an office, we might put a sink in there or we, you know, we might put several outlets in there um, and those types of things. So it'd be that, the, that would be the electrical work. And the vestibule, if we're gonna have locking and unlocking exactly. doors, so it's gonna be electric. Electrical have to, that way. Do, do mm -hmm. have the control yep. from a remote area. And so we're doing fifteen thousand dollars for an architect to design the, a room and a vestibule. Right. Well, it's it's gonna the, most of that money really is the vestibule. I mean that that's a consider consider. Um, right. I mean just yeah, yeah just. Oh, well, I guess when you're designing something for safety and a vestibule that's going to be secured, it's not just you know. It's not throwing it's a not wall. It's not drywall up. and yeah. And, and, well, no, I'm saying that, but we yeah. have most of our schools have a vestibule. Or but this one doesn't. No, I understand that, but I'm just saying we have to redesign. No, you need, you need an architect. We do. I can, I can a, show a public it to you building here. like that. Yeah. Here's the redesign. Okay. It's got to be so. safe. And then we, yeah, I understand it needs to be safe. And then it says it needs a, that possibly additional fire sprinkler heads mm -hmm. or the relocation of such. So it's not, this, even though this is a firm fixed, it's not firm fixed if we find that when they design it that we... Right, we, we do do it to contingency, but yeah. those would be, those additional fire sprinklers will be, since we're creating um, isolation rooms, they're gonna have to have their own. The fire marshal makes us go by certain codes. Each area has to have certain things. So all that brings us into code with what the expectations are with the fire marshal. Okay. And as I said, each festival is, I know we do have one, well, we're going to be doing three this year, mm -hmm. but but they are honestly very different in every school because the design of the schools are so right. different. And again, did we we didn't want to we don't. I just have a hard time thinking we don't have somebody local um, that we that we can look. I mean that we can look at. She's right in here. Somebody question. look. You know, did we did we look at other? Did we look at local air, um, companies? Um, I. Do, Contracting. Well, um, part of the procurement process too, um, when we're looking to piggyback, is is definitely go out and look for the local bids or local quotes. In addition to looking at other contracts to possibly piggyback off of or enter um, mm -hmm. cooperative purchasing agreements. So um, it is a requirement to get at least three before it is even taken for consideration for the executive team and to the board for final approval. Okay. So we got two others. Um, I, I, it's Mr. Pender has them. Because again, I, I would like to see those sometimes just so I can kind of get an idea of what's coming in. But um, okay, thank you. I know yeah. it's hard because I know. No, that and I don't have a problem. I mean, Pinder, yeah. I certainly can facilitate if you'd like to go meet one on one with um, Mr. Pinder and he can share that information. I, I mean, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we don't, yeah, I'd, we definitely I absolutely want to be safe, really don't have a problem just, with that. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Do I hear a motion? Mr. President, I move that we accept the vigil contracting construction of the nursing room expansion at Kennard Elementary School in the amount of $83,022.56 and the budget source would be County Local School Construction Fund Project Number 70329. Second. second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 All right, next on the list, well, that's it for action items. Citizen participation, is there anyone who wants to make a comment? Matt? <laughs> I don't want to time myself. All right. <laughs> Future meetings and events. Uh, next work session is going to be at 5 o'clock on May 17th, 2023. And then on June 7th, 2023 at 6 p.m., we've got our regular board meeting scheduled at that time. To have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Right. Before that, can I ask one question? We've heard some comments this evening, you know, about portables and stuff. A Rise Academy, that's behind mm -hmm. our building currently. Those what? Those portables will be gone, right? Yes, eventually they will be gone. But I mean, when mm -hmm. we move things down, and then move the Kenal School over. So, when I hear 
we're adding portables to Kent Island High School. Yes, we're adding some portables down there. Three. We're also losing, what, how many back here? Uh, a total of probably five. So we are five. not having as many portables as we did before. So, I mean, that's correct. You know, we it's, not, it's not like we're less, adding. We will have less portables next year than we do this year. This year. That is an accurate statement. And, and the security of those portables have been very, I mean, I know Joe's on top of it. It's not the best, can certainly yeah. agree to that. But uh, there are being actions taken. Absolutely, that so more than more than back here. That is very open. Yes. To our students. Yes, and walkie-talkies, panic buttons. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah, but since we're talking about it, and you and you brought it up, I mean, um, I don't think also, and it's not twenty. I think it's fifteen million. Although it's still a big chunk. Close of to money. twenty. They said Close seventeen. Is it twenty now? Okay. Was um, it's, it's, although yeah. it was still it's less in revamping here, but I don't well, think to, it's... To revamp here is $18 million. Well, it'll probably go up now just because yeah. initially we were talking well, about it was true. less money that's true, to build a new one than it was, and that money had been allotted. I forget yeah. what year it was. Um, Correct. You know, so... Yeah, it's definitely going to fall out I don't um, find between 18 that, and 20. Yeah, I definitely don't find it as important as either as... A, as as protecting our students, but that's just my that's my comment. So, mm -hmm. and, I, and I and I you know our but I don't think this board puts our students. I mean that's a high priority of this well, board. Well, I don't think it's that he just the question was do we find the twenty thousand dollar twenty million dollar building more important than our students? And I don't think we do. Because, right, I don't think I do either. Right. That's just all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So. It's just hard I, to fathom I'm, why we're building a new I'm board okay of ed building and not building onto the school that can't support mm -hmm. the amount of kids so, it has in it. That's what. So my, I guess my question is then for this building here, what what is your proposal for this building to keep it to a place where um, our employees are in an area that's clean and safe and, um, you know. Um, ADA compliant. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 you know, there's no secure vestibule here. We're wide open. Our, the windows on the back of the building are the original windows. Um, there's a lot of structural issues, foundational issues. Um, you know, there's a lot of issues that need to be addressed here. So I guess I would ask is what is, what is the recommendation for the people who support our school district that work in this building? What would the recommendation be for them? Well, the sense it just came out kind of, since this has just kind of been, you know, brought out and addressed. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so it's not something we put a lot something I, I mean we've thought about it and I've certainly thought about it apparently as has um, Miss Capes is is there a way to just build on to our you know drop our monies right now for a new building we definitely want to not to have a sick building for our because uh, this is part of our, our executive team and the people who work here are also a valued part of the team um, but I'm assuming the portables are not sick. There's no mold. There's there's fresh air. Um, they're going to have. We don't have a vestibule here. We don't have a vestibule in portals. Neither do our students. And see about adding on to our school. We have two schools that still have portables. So no, in other words, schools. several. I'm, that's all I'm saying. I don't have the answers. I'm just saying is this something that we can look at? Because from what I do understand, from a legal standpoint, um, if it's board of education and county commissioners we can move capital project money well how about we do this you brought it up how about we do this um, can we get an estimate of what it would cost first of all to move the students mm -hmm. that we have in in or are projected to have in these um, temporaries what it would cost to get them into a building in other words an addition on a building and uh, I, I think that might be a starting point and I'm not saying that we need to take funds out of anywhere else right now, but if we know how much it's going to cost to get them into a secure location, then we can have a, a better educated discussion on solutions. Yeah. You know. Yeah, definitely this was just, this is just off the cuff because it's just kind of been um, brought up, but something since it's been, a, you know, opened up the, the conversation, um, is it worth it? I think it's worth additional conversation and sure. worth at least an initial, I do think our, you know, we owe that much to. And there's other considerations too, because as soon as you build an add-on, you know, or an addition for so many students, then three years from now, when the population goes up, you know, increases, now we got other issues. Well, we do, but then at least we so. were part of a solution. You know, we at least tried to. It is, but the, right. I mean, you know, this building has a long history, and it's way before this board, the previous board, and even the board prior to that. Um, 
they're spending a lot of money in this boarding just to, to keep it from fall not i say falling just to keep it secure yeah, right. so you know we're spending could be spending anywhere and i'm just going to pick a number but it's probably at close three to five million dollars a year we could put in this building and still just have the same old building right. and i think that's one of the reasons the commissioners have suggested and moved this project forward for a, a school board out there not taken away from the safety of our our, our, our students or anything yeah. you know we are going to be negative with uh, Port of, uh, Rise Academy will no longer be back here. They will be in a brick and mortar building. Yes, we will be adding a few portables at Ken Island as we do in, have them at Queen Anne's. I think every day Joe and our people are working heavily to make those more secured. Is it ideal? But I think that when the state comes down with mandated programs and you only have so much space for so many students, it's always going to be an issue. I, oh, yeah. and, and I don't think, we're, you know, we can certainly look into it. I think it's something we should definitely work at. But it's a lot more complicated than just just saying stop this building and we're going to put the money somewhere else. Well, I mean, this has been yeah. well thought out for for yeah, many yeah. a year prior I, to this board. I don't no. think we're going there right now. Um, no. Or if we ever will. But I think, like I said, the, the first thing to do is let's gather a little more information. We we know what the problem is. It's security, and uh, if if getting them into a secure location is a potential way to remedy that, which obviously it is. Um, then let's, and we don't need to contract out anybody, but just get a roundabout from, you, you guys know, in general ballpark area, you know, just from experience, I would imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, um, to put together just a rough estimate of what would, what would uh, it would take to do that, you know. And how many people are we talking? Because if we're going to go schools, portables, how many people? Portable, it's just a conversation. I think it at least warrants, and poor city's probably going to um, not miss another meeting. Um, because he's like, well, because he would have so much more information than what I know that we have. We're, we're lay people, um, and he's a professional about this facility stuff. But, um, well, I know you have some construction. I understand it. It's just a conversation, and it doesn't have to, no decisions, but I think it does warrant, just my opinion, I agree. Uh, a further conversation. In, in full disclosure, Dr. Sealens did a good job filling in for Sid, but we did miss Sid this evening. <laughs> I, <laughs> She's probably saying that's my disclosure as well. I think, <laughs> and everyone does a great job. That is not at all. Um, it's kind of like saying just because I love pasta doesn't mean I don't just like that I just like everything else. I'm just right. saying, yeah, yes, that's all I'm saying, and nothing more. Don't read me. Let's not read into that. So, can we do that? Sure, absolutely. Whatever the board would like, we will certainly get some numbers together for you and uh, and have that ready for you by the next board meeting. And I, and I, th session, I think maybe I think yeah, yeah, no, 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 meeting. right. You, you work it in. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, uh, definitely not. Obviously, school. Yeah. Oh my we're goodness. Not, yeah. yeah. So we definitely right. can do that. Sure. And okay. Through the end of the school year, safely, and well. Yes. All right. Any other comments, questions? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Second. second. Motion. To, okay. There we motion go. Motion second. <laughs> All those in favor, say aye. 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 Good night. Aye.